Hi everyone in YouTube land. It's about that time of year where it is uh, approaching the holiday of Thanksgiving. And so I am transitioning my dolls into what they were wearing for Thanksgiving, but um, what they were going to wear for Thanksgiving. But then because I had them in fall stuff for so long, I started getting a little antsy with some of them. And um, this was especially true for my first toddler doll. And she is my only toddler doll by Ashton Drake. So um, because I was so enamored with her, I just couldn't wait to dress her up for Christmas. And she was in her Thanksgiving outfit for so long that um, I just thought her Thanksgiving outfit was her fall outfit. <laughs> so um, I didn't have a whole lot of clothes for her. But then I kept looking at this outfit that I had purchased for her. And it has like the Santa uh, applique on it with the hat that's like a gingham print. And I just kept looking at it and thinking how adorable would she look in that outfit. And she has another winter outfit, uh, not a winter outfit, a Christmas outfit that I bought for her as well. So she technically had two. So I thought, well, maybe I could dress my dolls uh, this upcoming holiday season in their casual Christmas outfits. And then halfway through December, I could put them in their fancier Christmas outfits. Um, so that's what I decided to do. So she's got the little... Uh, white hair barrettes, uh, kind of like pom pomish barrettes in her hair to show off her curly locks. And that's one thing I like about these toddler dolls uh, by companies, professional companies. Um, they just have the best hair. And that's another thing that I like about the Ashton Drake dolls is that it's a real company versus reborn dolls. And you really have to know the artist to really appreciate, I think, um, the doll. And for me, I'm just not one of those people yet. I, I feel like I really do like doll companies uh, because of the professionalism. And I feel like these this day and age, you have so many people who are unprofessional at times that instead of us being honest and calling some of those people out, we, um, a lot of people are more willing to accept um, that there are just a few dishonest people out there that they would buy dolls from, and they're perfectly okay with that. Where for me, I feel like I really want the honesty and the professionalism of an actual doll company. Um, I really do miss that and I appreciate that. So that's one thing that I'll never complain about when it comes to having Ashton Drake dolls is I like the fact that if I ever get tired of my dolls, which I don't think I will, um, I can always sell them again in their original outfits and know that um, that will be fine for another doll collector. But for reborn dolls, and this is what I liked about doing my research on reborn dolls, is that a lot of people don't recognize the artists of certain reborn dolls. So it's a little harder to resell reborn dolls once you decide that you've either had enough of the doll community or you just ha have had enough of doll collecting where you just want to you know, do something else. And by that time, some of those dolls have not appreciated in value. They've actually um, caused you to lose a little bit of money. So with that being said, she is in her beautiful outfit. And I could see this outfit on a grandbaby too. So again, um, whenever that time comes, I would take this outfit off of her and either give this to someone who did have a real preemie baby or did have a real uh, six-month-old baby who would look just as adorable. And so um, for this doll, her name is Judith, and this is Bettina. So Judy and Betty for White Christmas characters because I love the fact that this is representative of a sister's love 
for um, my white Christmas characters. But um, that's who I named them after, at least. So she's got something that will match her, her big sister. And I like the fact that they have the milk and cookie theme going on with Santa being right there. So I think these dolls match perfectly. This is my little 2Q Jackson. He is in his rah-rah kind of <laughs> um, outfit that you would put. Like It kind of reminds me of a varsity jacket that you would have for a high school football player. Um, so, of course, my husband was really into football, and so therefore my youngest... Uh, and the youngest member of my family and my only son uh, had to have football stuff when he was young. He still has football stuff um, because I think my husband is just such a, um, you know, a former athlete who he's not one of those guys who could have a son who doesn't put his son in football paraphernalia. So when I saw 2Q Jackson, this is how my son looked around, I would say like three months old, uh, four months old, and even to some extent five months old. Um, so he had like that, the same kind of smile, same kind of eyes, same kind of curly hair. Um, you know, he was just dressed like TQ Jackson is dressed today. So, and he has the turkey book. All right, my other dolls are my Middleton dolls, and so I keep them in Middleton clothing most of the time, or um, what is it, Madame Alexander clothing. And this is my other doll, who is um, an Ashton Drake doll, as well as 2Q Jackson, and his name is Michel. And uh, that is his stock name, but I call him the French version of his name, which is Michel. Um, and so his middle name is Talbo because again, that's the only way I can personalize these dolls is if they don't have a name, I can either give them a name. And if they do have a name, I can always give them a middle name. So Michel Talbo is dressed in a similar outfit. Um, actually, this is the same outfit that he wore a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago. But this time I turned around his bib showing that it is my first Thanksgiving bib. Um, so therefore he is in all actuality experiencing his first Thanksgiving in our home. And in honor of that, he is holding the happy Thanksgiving uh, card. So I got a little card from the dollar store um, to pin with my um, reborn dolls. Same thing with his sister. This is Alana, not Alana. Why do I keep wanting to call her Alana? This is Alicia and her middle name is um, Tiana in honor of the first African-American Disney princess, because I feel like she's like one of my little princesses and she still has on her um, outfit from Halloween. But this time, just like uh, Michelle Talbot, I turned it around so it could say my first Thanksgiving. And you can see how their bibs look for Thanksgiving. So I really love these two outfits. And she too has a Thanksgiving card that goes along with her. And down here, you can see where I'm slowly but surely changing my dolls for Christmas uh, with these two dolls, with Gigi um, and with my doll uh, Surya, I feel like they are experiencing Christmas abroad where this is the England outfit for American Girl, World Traveler, and this is the France outfit. So she will be experiencing the Jacques Noel of uh, Christmases this year. All right, on the other side of the bed, you have uh, Tiffany, and Tiffany is just adorable. I can't seem to get her out of this adorable outfit because she looks too cute in it, and so I paired it with my first Thanksgiving bib for a baby uh, because she is experiencing her first Thanksgiving in our home. Uh, same thing with Alana Addison. She is a little cutie patootie, always smiling. 
And again, when I look at her face, it's so similar to how my grandmother used to look. <laughs> Even in her old age, she still had one of those childlike uh, smiles and childlike faces to me. So uh, Alana is just so similar to her. Um, and some of my cousins who were born um, in the 80s and 90s, they kind of took after my grandmother too on my mother's side. Um, and so when they were babies, they were very similar looking to Alana um, out of all of the other siblings that um, I've had over the years or uh, family members that I've had over the years. But Alana doesn't have any shoes that I could find for her because she wears a newborn size. And um, usually nowadays, Carter's and other clothing companies will make um little faux shoes to kind of um, go with the stockings like they're like attached. It's like a little print for Mary Jane's with the stockings. But in this case, Alana's outfit just came with regular stockings. Actually, I think I took these stockings from her Christmas outfit that she'll have on in a few days. But this is her Thanksgiving outfit. And I got this last year on clearance knowing that I was going to purchase Alana and that she would uh, wear this size and she would be perfect for this outfit. And I was right, she is. And this was my son's first baby's first Thanksgiving book. So now um, that he's outgrown it, it's going to Alana. And this is Jerusha. And I named Jerusha after the character... Uh, in Daddy Long Legs, and so uh, Jerusha is an Adora doll. Those are my little Cabbage Patch preemies back there, and they are adorable. Over here, we finally brought out Santa. And then down here, we have my other Adora doll, Shelby. Okay, down below, you have uh, Helen, who is my, or Catherine Helen, and she is my, our new baby from Pleasant Company. You still have Shayla here, and she'll always be in this outfit, I believe. Uh, then I have a change up here. I have my two uh, beautiful Bitty Baby retro dolls, and so you have Jasper and Jacinda, and they are now wearing the classic Bitty Baby dolls that were originally, this outfit or these outfits were originally made for the first blonde haired bitty babies that were introduced and then the following year or so um, they introduced the brunette short haired bitty babies so I felt like this would be the year I would put my brunette bitty babies in this outfit or in these outfits and they look adorable I think they go really well with my white body Samantha because Samantha ends up getting a nephew um, and I, I don't know, when I see them together, it just feels like they match uh, because she has kind of like a velour dress and it looks like Samantha is dressed to the nines in her fancy cranberry dress along with her original book, hard copy of uh, Samantha Surprise, hardcover copy to go with her pin of Samantha Surprise. So they kind of, they match, they have the same um, illustration. So I really like that about my white body, Samantha. This is my original 1993 Addie, and she is in her original hairstyle, um, that she was bought in, or she had in her hair when she was bought. Um, I've taken it out and then I just redid it. So I think I redid it fairly well. Um, because I love Addie's hair. Addie's hair is similar to my hair. And so um, Addie's pin is right there for Addie's surprise. So even though I don't have her book with her, she has her original meat book and she is in her Addie apron uh, with her holiday dress. And I really love uh, the Addie, Addie surprise Christmas story because it explains how she got the dress. And... Um, it talks a lot about her mother's job and how complicated uh, times were for African-Americans uh, right after the Civil War. And so um, then you have my other Addie. This is my 2000-something Addie that I got at a doll show. And her wig is thinning, so I always manage to style her hair 
um, a little bit differently and I always end up trying to find little hair accessories and ribbons and scrunchies that will make her hair look even more outstanding uh, just because again I really want to honor um, Addie um, of all different decades whether she has a thick wig thin wig whether she's um, new or old as a, a secondhand doll I always try to make my dolls look pretty good uh, for the holidays but she has um, her high hopes book where she wears this dress and I really do see this dress as a holiday dress so I'm going to keep her in this dress this is from Caroline's collection but I thought it would really go well in front of my Addie doll and Nellie. And a lot of people forget about the socioeconomics of the Irish in America and how the Irish started. Um, some of the Irish people were discriminated against uh, when they first came to America. So they took a very um, low socioeconomic position in society where a lot of them were like maids and butlers and whatnot, uh, servicing the high class people of society, uh, which were the first wave of immigrants, like such as the pilgrims, uh, the first uh, original colonists who settled the country, especially up in New York. So you did have a lot of Irish people um, who were basically the servants to a lot of the first colonists who had moved up in the world and had very opulent households where they could have maids and cooks and whatnot. So um, when African Americans or when a few African Americans left for the Great Migration and were coming into the cities, taking roles as butlers and um, seamstresses, some of the Irish um, couldn't really take some of those roles. They had to take other roles such as maids and cooks uh, in affluent households such as Samantha's. So that's why Samantha's story is so interesting because Samantha's story is almost true to the history of America where she had a seamstress who was pretty much African-American and told the story of African-Americans from uh, her seamstress's point of view. And then she had servants and she also had a servant girl uh, next door in the form of Nellie that she befriended. So Nellie's story is uh, very similar to the Irish story. Mm -hmm. 